When the Danish poet and writer Adam Oenslager, back in 1809, wrote what would become the Danish national anthem, he used the word undi to describe the country. Undi roughly translates to lovely, adorable, or even delightful. And that is exactly how I would describe my home country too. Denmark isn't grand, pompous, or epic. There are no glaciers, mountains, big waterfalls, grand canyons, or volcanoes. There are hills, beaches and shorelines, lakes, forests, open areas, heaths, a few cliffs here and there, a couple of big dunes, and fields upon fields upon fields. And wow, do I absolutely love it for landscape photography. This is my home. This is the country I feel nostalgic about, and it's here I can explore and find all those hidden gems. In this video where I want to add just a little extra to that cinematic feeling and sense of adventure, I'll visit the island Funen. Funen is the third largest island in Denmark and one I've wanted to photograph for years. However, since I've mainly done my photography in Jutland and recently on Sealand, Funen has never really been a place I'd just go on a regular photography outing. There is, of course, much, much, much more to Funen than what I can show in one video, but I think I've made myself a great list of points of interest to follow. With spring bloom and the arrival of summer, it was finally time to jump in the car, go on an adventure, and visit some locations I've never seen before. We'll start on the small peninsula Hillness in southwestern Funen, so lean back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy this cinematic landscape photography adventure video. Okay, so here's the deal. This place is gorgeous. I do feel a little bit optimistic because it is probably going to be a beautiful sunset. So I have finally made it to Funen, also in Danish known as Fyn. And here in the background I have Hellness Lighthouse and Hellness Dolmen also. So I'm going to mainly photograph the lighthouse, but if I can get a shot of the dolmen too, it would be nice. The thing is, I've been walking a little bit around trying to find an angle to this lighthouse. It's a little bit hard because there's quite a lot of not debris, but other stuff around it. So we have the dolmen here, and as you could see in the intro shot, I tried to have both the dolmen and the lighthouse in there for videography. The only problem is that for a photo, ah, there's a lot of stuff around it. So what I'm trying to do is to just get really, really low down to the grass. So something like this here with the long lens, or the camera 28 to 200. I do think that this can actually work. So I'm just making sure that my polarizing filter is actually darkening down the sky. And then I just find like a low angle right here. The one thing I'm struggling a little bit with are those trees out there on the left side. They are a little bit annoying, but the thing is, if I zoom in, then maybe I can get to a place where I don't have them in the photo. But then again, the photo may become a little bit too narrow. So I think I'll just have to bite the apple and deal with the fact that it's there. Now it is actually also on purpose that I've come here a little bit out of the golden 
hour. It is getting late in the day, the sun is coming down, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to deal with like orange colors on the white lighthouse. Because in my experience, I actually prefer a lighthouse, if it's white, to be white. But I of course also want to have that beautiful side light on the lighthouse. So that is why I've come here a little bit outside of the golden hour and then I will go to another place to photograph sunset. So just when I arrived, I actually also flew the drone. And in all honesty, I think this specific location is best from the drone. I'll let you decide when I'm showing you both the end photo, but also the drone photos. But as you can see here, the video I got from the drone looks so good. clouds are coming in so I'll just get started with this one but this place is really cool so let's just see how this insane perspective will turn out right now I have my brand new DJI Mavic 3 Pro in the air with the 7 time zoom which is about 166 millimeter as a focal length so to get to Hellness, this little island slash peninsula, you have to cross this dam right here. And it looks really, really cool when you do some perspective compression. So as you can see, by moving my camera way back, I make myself small and then I have my background, which looks much bigger. It is super hard to capture something long like this road here, if you are just using a wide angle lens. So that is what I'm trying right now from this perspective here with the drone. So I have also put up my Sony a7R5 on the ground with the long lens as you can see on the b-roll right here. And I'm also trying to capture this shot from the ground because after all 60 megapixels is more than 12 megapixels which is what I'm getting out of the seven times zoom on the Mavic right here. But I do think that in the end, it does help the perspective just ever so slightly to get it a little bit off the ground and then photograph with the long lens in this direction here. So even at three times zoom, the perspectives you can get out of the Mavic 3 Pro is just ridiculous. So as you can see here in the background, I have some beautiful sunbeams over the ocean and with myself on this hilltop and then with the ocean, you can really see how I stand out here. You cannot see my face or anything like that, but nevertheless, you can see that, that I'm talking to you. So 
even though I have the dam in that direction over there, I just couldn't resist and also get this shot here because that looks actually epic. <laughs> even though I said that Denmark is not a particularly epic country, the sunbeams look epic. So I've been waiting for a little while and hoped that the sun will come out and it definitely is right now. As you can see, I have put up this <laughs> little way of shooting. So I'm using my backpack to shield the camera from the wind because it has actually become quite windy. And I'm all the way out at 300 millimeter. The reason for this and not 400 millimeter, because I actually want to zoom in a little bit more, is that I simply cannot get the entire scene in focus, even though I'm shooting at like f16 or f20. So I'm zooming a little bit out and then I will have to crop afterwards. For this specific lens, I think it's okay because at 400 millimeter, it is a little bit soft. So at 300 millimeter, even though I'm cutting away pixels, the photo should still be sharper, if that makes any sense. So uh, with the sun coming out, hopefully it will come a little bit more out closer to the horizon and it can hopefully put in a little bit of light here just before sunset. As much as I like this final blue hour photo, I would have preferred a version with some streaks from the headlights of a car on the road. Sadly, the wind was just too strong for it to make sense despite my little setup. I also got a few photos of the road from the air without me in the foreground and this one turned out to be my favorite. As you can see, no matter whether I photographed with the drone or from the ground, I generally preferred a vertical composition. I found there to be too much dead space in the horizontal compositions and the verticals just fills the frame much more. If you struggle with composition in landscape photography, be sure to get my ebooks on exactly that topic. Here I cover the many different compositional tools one by one with easy to read text and loads of examples as to get to the point fast. The final chapter of each book summarize and bring everything together I have covered in the ebook. There is a link to both of them in the description of the video. So I'm right now driving from the southern part of Fyn to the northern part and I'm just stopping on different locations on the way up there. And one of the really good locations I found here is yet another lone tree. You know me, I like my lone trees. And this here is probably one of my favorite lone trees I've found on a rapeseed field. So what makes this specific scene and this specific tree stand out is that the tree is actually in the field. It's not like in the horizon behind the field. It is actually standing in the field and you can see that in the photos. So as you can see this rapeseed field is actually quite tall so I'll have to like put the camera up like this but it's no problem because of my flippy floppy screen. But you can actually see when I'm filming this right here that as I said the tree is actually standing in the field and not like behind it 
which for me just adds a little bit more spice to the photo, just a little bit more depth. So it's actually quite an easy photo because there's plenty of light and I simply just have to figure out at what height I want the camera, how much of the foreground rapeseed do I want in there, what kind of aperture do I want to shoot at, should it be a lot out of focus or just a little bit out of focus. Those are simply the only creative choices I have to make here. Obviously, where do I want to put the tree in the composition? Do I want to zoom a little bit out? Do I want to zoom a little bit in? So there are definitely creative decisions to make, but shooting almost in the middle of the day here, it's just perfect for this kind of photo. I would have preferred if there was like a little white puffy cloud in the scene, but I actually still think that this photo here is probably my favorite rapeseed, lone tree, blue sky photo that I have in my portfolio. So I found another viewpoint and as you can see here I'm not standing in the field, I'm standing like kind of between the fields and I found another tree which is arguably even more aesthetically looking than the first one. I really like this one and just like with the other one I'm trying just vertical, horizontal, everything that makes sense in regard to this one. Trying to get in a little bit here of these foreground flowers and then I'm also playing around with the polarizing filter and you can see how big of a difference a polarized sky does versus a non-polarized sky. So the thing I just love about photos of rapeseed fields and lone trees is just like their simplicity and that they just remind me of summer and warmth and just that the weather is good. And the weather is usually good here in May in Denmark. So it's just like optimistic, non-moody, just happy, happy, happy summer. I returned the following day as I could see there were puffy clouds in the sky and I came away with this photo. So, I have come to a location called Fyns Hoved. It is the northernmost part of Fyn. Fyns Head is also the name. And this place is gorgeous. I've never been here before. 
the research I've done for this location is quite minimal, but I would say there's a decent amount of potential here. As you can see in the background, there's some windswept trees. Driving out here, I also saw some pretty cool viewpoints. There's a bird reserve over there. I can read that from 15th of July, which is one and a half months from now. People can again go there, they can't go there in spring. So I'm not going to fly the drone over there, even though I can fly it here from what I can see. There's also some other trees over there and some more viewpoints. So there's about four hours to sunset. So I'll spend the next two trying to look a bit around and exploring a bit. Okay, so here's the deal. This place is gorgeous, there's no doubt. But I just feel I'm here for photography at the wrong time. I can imagine this place have so much potential with the low morning mist. <laughs> I know it's a cliche for me by now, but really I, I think that would work a little bit better. Also in moody weather, big heavy clouds, rain clouds, all that stuff. I actually think would work so much better here. I was just flying the drone and I think it worked really well, the photo that I got. However, I just, <clears throat> I know that there's another place that works perfectly for this kind of weather, a clean sunset that I'll get tonight. So I think I will go there instead. <laughs> No, no, we're not doing that again. So besides the beautiful nature that you can find here on Fyn, one of my favorite things is definitely their Danish accent because they speak a little bit more like this, so it's a little bit more optimistic. And it's really hard to keep a specific accent when you are used to it in Danish and then have to translate it to English or speak it in English. So uh, yeah, but I do feel a little bit optimistic right now because it is probably going to be a beautiful sunset. And I think, I think there's great potential for some nice, good sunset photos. So it has really gotten cold really fast with all this wind and the sun is coming down as you can see here in the background. So the idea is that the sun should come down kind of in the ocean and I can shoot into the sun through these trees and have these beautiful line of trees. And then I can also fly the drone out over the ocean. Hopefully that can work, but this forest is Although much smaller, kind of giving me that vibe of Gespensterwald in northern Germany that I visited a few years ago. Although a little bit more open, fewer trees, but I still think there's a decent amount of potential right here. It is just so windy and so cold and because of this constant wind in my face, oh, it's just hard. Uh, sadly, the sun is getting snuffed out by a marine layer. It is so annoying. It's so disappointing. I've been looking at this for the entire day and hope that I could actually get some sun here through the forest. I have managed to get a little bit of light, a little bit of the effect that I hoped for. But yeah, the sun is simply just not strong enough. The only thing I can do now is just hope when the sun comes down that I can get it as like a red spot through the trees. I think that will also look cool, but you know, like when you have your mind set to something and then you don't get it and then it's uh, annoying. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, uh, what I'm doing also is that I'm simply just working my way backwards through the forest. I have marked different places here, as you can see, X marks the spot, that's where I put the tripod. And in that way I can just like move backwards and shoot the compositions that I found over the past hour. It is a beautiful forest, plenty of potential here. Sadly just the light isn't playing ball tonight. I once learned from uh, John, who have attended some of my workshops, that uh, it's not an adventure before something goes wrong. <laughs> and, and I guess he's right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll take a few more photos with both the long lens and the 28-200. And then I'll choose the best ones and show them to you now. Especially this last photo turned out way better than I had hoped for when on location. I really like how I managed to bring out the best of this photo in post-processing and if you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to benefit from the coupon code in the description of the video to save a bit of money when enrolling in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. It's designed with beginners in mind, while existing users of both Lightroom and Photoshop can jump in and begin wherever they see fit. It's in this course I share all my editing techniques, so if you want to learn how I edit my photos, this is your chance. So be sure to check out the links in the description below if you want to learn more about composition in landscape photography and editing. Remember to use the coupon code to get a little bit off when you sign up. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. See you next time.